Hi, everyone. Today, I'm joined by Bruce Alderman. Uh, Bruce is many, many things. Professionally, he teaches uh, in the Consciousness and Transformative Studies program at National University, formerly JFK University, is that right? Um, yeah. And uh, is currently also the director for the Blue Sky Leaders program out of uh, CIIS. But he's also um, an elder in the integral theory community. Uh, and I know that the title or uh, the label elder is something that maybe sits, uh, uh, is, is something that you're growing more comfortable with as people keep uh, uh, referring to you as that. But it's true. I mean, Bruce is an incredible uh, repository of, uh, gosh, just hi historical and institutional knowledge around integral theory. You've been part of the integral community for uh, decades. I'll let you say more about it in a second, but just to kind of, you know, set the stage that you're really, um, you've been really actively engaged with the community at many different levels and have done uh, all sorts of work in terms of, you know, writing um, participation in conferences and in various leadership capacities. And so, um, yeah, uh, this conversation I wanted to have uh, with Bruce, who's, by the way, also been on the podcast uh, before, uh, I think a couple years ago, uh, and but really wanted to dig into this issue around the metamodernism integral debate, uh, integral versus metamodernism, just a lot of the kind of uh, hopefully generative tension that's, that's kind of emerged in the community recently, um, uh, as it kind of goes through its cycles of, you know, uh, integral metamodern uh, dancing with each other and um, and and uh, bumping up against, uh, I don't know, various kinds of uh, distinctions, differentiations, and also a lot of similarity um, uh, as well. But um, so that's just a very brief introduction, and I'll set it up a little bit more in a second. But Bruce, why don't you say a little bit more about yourself and your relationship to the integral community first? And thanks, by the way, so much again for being here. I appreciate it. Sure. Yeah. Happy to be here. And I'm not sure where to begin with that. Uh, I was exposed to some of Wilbur's work years ago, back in the probably early 80s. And so I wanted to pursue that further. And I went to a university in California to get transpersonal psychology degree, since he had been really a very influential figure in the transpersonal psychology field. So for me, I got the degree in transpersonal psychology. Uh, as soon as I was finishing that, they opened up a degree program in integral psychology. So I stayed and uh, did another year um, just so I could have at least some of those courses as part of my degree. Since that time, I've done a number of things. I A number of years after graduating, I started teaching at JFK in uh, a couple different programs. Um, the Transformative Arts Program and the Holistic Health Program and the Transpersonal Counseling Psychology Program. So I, I well, taught... and and you taught integral. I'm just yeah. I mean, I want to set up some of your kind of integral bona fides here, essentially. And so, like, so yeah, you you you've taught integral theory. Um, you've published. I know you you did a book, Dancing with Sophia, where you you've been engaging with uh, you know the integral paradigm and bringing in uh, other kind of meta theoretical lenses and all that. And um, and you've also participated in conferences and, and that sort of a thing. And 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 it, I mean, for the whole story, actually, most of our first conversation on the podcast is it was uh, you kind of sharing your whole kind of journey through um, through a lot of a lot of these things and, and whatnot. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to give people a sense of sort of your specific relationship with Integral up front so they have a sense of, you know, your kind of depth of engagement with it mainly. Sure. Yeah, I can yeah slip out of bio mode and get a little bit more summative mode here. Um, basically, yeah, I, I taught for the Integral Theory um, program that ran for a couple of years out of JFK. Uh, that was headed up by Sean S. Bjorn Hargens. And then I taught integral related content in multiple degree programs. Um, I've participated in at least three uh, integral academic conferences, published a number of things in integral journals, um, and been running a several integral related forums online for a number of years. The longest running for about 15 years maybe is the Integral Post-Metaphysical Spirituality Forum, which was on a couple platforms before um, Facebook. And I'm also doing the integral stage now. So yeah. that one is not an exclusively integral orientation, but it's uh, got some integral in the background, but it's meant to interface with a lot of different modalities and approaches and paradigms. Awesome. Yes. Thank you. That's so, and I mean, people who have, will have been around 
the scene, whether it's integral scene or the meta modern scene, will I'm sure be familiar with you and your sort of depth of experience there. But I just wanted you to kind of, you know, yeah, lay that out a little bit for people. And what I wanted to do with our time was basically uh, actually have more of like a conversation, less of an interview and more like, um, you know, uh, an opportunity to kind of go back and forth. Um, because for my background, you know, I'm, I'm coming from the meta modern context. And so for me, just very briefly, you know, discovering that 2013 or so in the the work of uh, Vermeulen and Von Doniker, the kind of cultural studies stuff. Um, and then some years later, after working in that paradigm for a while, then being introduced to the Hansi Freinach stuff, um, which then brought in uh, a sort of developmental lens. Uh, and of course, you know, uh, Hansi having a kind of uh, influence and in lineage through uh, integral theory. And so bringing in that framing of metamodernism was was a big eye opener for me so then that was actually how i discovered integral theory um and uh and so that's been a component of the metamodern discourse ever since the hansi freinock books showed up on the scene and uh in a kind of interesting and kind of half related way the lena rachel anderson kind of cultural codes which isn't integral uh related in fact you know lena has made efforts to try to distance her her work from uh from integral theory uh but there's conceptually a lot of overlap i would say and i think people who read uh, her uh work originally titled meta modernity will will see that in terms of the theory of cultural codes and and uh the role of complexity etc so anyway that was sort of what brought me into that um and and so since then i've sort of been aware of it's it's been it's been uh, from the origins of of my engagement with the kind of online meta modern scene that there's been a lot of conversation around what is the relationship of meta modernism to integral theory and there's been a lot of different takes on that. And so part of the reason why uh, that we're having this conversation right now is because a lot of this has kind of again, been sort of drummed up again uh, from, I think, my recent book, which um, which I'll get to in a second. But I know that a lot of this was also um, really happening basically soon after Hansi Freinach's work came out as well, because people obviously saw the connections and also noticed the differences. And so I want to I want to get to that in a second, too. But um, but with with my book coming out and trying to synthesize these different uh, threads of the metamodern discourse, um, that seems to have engendered, again, a kind of a new round of, of wrestling with the relationship of metamodernism and integral. So I want to kind of, you know, I'll speak to my perspective, both as the author of that book and also as someone who's been in the metamodern scene. And I wanted to talk to you, given your uh, depth of, of knowledge and familiarity with the integral scene. And also because, I mean, you've been one of, uh, I don't want to say one of the pointed critics, but you've been one of the people to kind of raise these issues, you know, in online spaces and 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 kind of furthering that conversation and debate and discussion. Um, so I think uh, people will be interested to to see us kind of um, try to dig into this issue a little bit. So anyway, that's the framing broadly of the of the conversation. Um, so the first question I want to pose to you is um, it, this: a lot of the the issue I think <laughs> relates to concerns about attribution, sort of proper attribution of uh, ideas. Uh, sources, that sort of a thing. Um, talk a little bit, if you will, about if you remember when Hansi Freinach's book came out, uh, you know, and and the way that people felt the Hansi Freinach books did or didn't properly uh, make a kind of explicit uh, connection to Wilbur's work. And I don't know if you have any thoughts on that yourself, but, you know, there was a little bit of controversy around that. So would you speak to a little bit some of that, both explain a little bit about that and your thoughts on that? I mean, do you think that that was a a fair critique of the the Hansi work? It's hard for me to get a clear perspective on it for a couple reasons. Uh, one is yes, I do remember when. Actually, I think they did a fairly interesting and innovative announcement of something new coming. They they had a, a you know a animated video disembodied voice announcing some kind of new movement coming that circulated in integral spaces. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of the introduction of the emergence of this character of Hansi Freinacht. And I remember that actually raised, you know, a lot of curiosity and interest in various integral circles that I saw. Um, shortly after it came out uh, and it really became clear what it was, definitely there was some back and forth uh critique and an interested engagement, you know, both with the material, feeling like there was uh, parts that were borrowed that did not have sufficient acknowledgement, um, that there there was acknowledgement made in the book, but some of it was kind of uh, 
you know, went under, uh, you, you know, uh, underground. And so some of people at that time, it wasn't really me at that time, but I remember there was some discussion around it and calling out that there was, you know, more borrowing than was actually um, outlined clearly, um, even though I think he did fairly clearly state that there were, you know, connections to it. And then the reason I'm saying I don't recall that specifically is I do have a number of recollections of him in different online contexts, um, especially in, in video interviews, pretty clearly laying out his own background um, with Integral and both what really worked for him and what was very powerful in it and what ultimately became too frustrating and stifling and the reason that he wanted to um, move away. Um, so overall, the figure of Hansi Franak is, is somebody who now um, I've absorbed that kind of uh, narrative that he's acknowledged it, at least in a number of pu public spaces, um, that there has been that influence. Uh, I think the book could have been better at outlining some of those things. Uh, but, you know, he nevertheless did. And he was pretty clear when he was pushing off against it to offer what he thought was a better framing or a better angle. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I have I found this... and it, a really important kind of touchstone. And, and also I think it, it, it sets up the deeper issue that I want to get into in, in a minute, which is around the legacy of integral, the future of integral, the reputation, the branding, its relationship to the Academy, all this sort of stuff that would sort of, uh, I think contextualize why, um, why the need for a Hansi Freinacht would show up, why the, why there are certain, uh, meaningful distances that happen or lack of, um, sort of owning an integral, um, heritage there or something. So I want to get to that in a second, but it sounds like you're saying on the whole, you don't have the impression, um, or would you, would you say it's a, would you go so far as to say it's a mischaracterization to look at the Hansi Freinacht works as sort of an, uh, a, 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 a kind of stealing of Wilbur's work and not giving him credit um, because that people make those kinds of accusations. Um, what do you make of that? It's on the edge a little bit. Um, you know, I, again, I, having spoken to him and knowing him, you know, I know that he's pretty upfront about the, the level of influence. I would say my impression is, and especially the number of ways he's both framed it in the book and outside of the book is that, uh, he didn't really pay that much attention to actual metamodern lineage or sourcing. It was a convenient label that would do a task for him that would allow him to establish a separate container. Um, and, you know, so he shanghaied the term as, you know, his phrase. Yeah. And so my understanding is he had his own project that was already relatively well-developed that didn't really source from metamodernism, but it was a term that became useful mm -hmm. for him to create, uh, you know, an alternative movement um, that carried forward some integral ideas that 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 um, was able to capitalize on their strengths without the entanglements with some of the, the spiritual and other sure. elements that proved to be dragging now, him down. If I may, though, I want to push back on that a little bit, because this is where my experience coming from the other side of the coin, I think, uh, fits in here, which is that I was coming from a meta modern lens. And when I saw this book come out and I saw, oh, this is interesting. This is not from what I've been reading, you know, the uh, Van Doniker and, and Vermeulen stuff. And uh, and so I pick up the book and I read it. And it was my reaction was, yes, there's a lot of new stuff in here that I, you know, having been familiar with this other uh, paradigm wouldn't immediately associate with with metamodernism. But at the same time, there was a lot of continuity. And here's where I want to push back, because I feel like people who want to draw divisions in the metamodern discourse and say, like, you know, I, I'm thinking of Greg, Greg Denver in particular, who likes to try to make very clear, like, no, there's this is real, you know, cultural studies, metamodernism, this is this other thing. And I, I just, as someone coming from the cultural studies camp, don't see it as black and white as that. If you read Hansi's work, I mean, it's it's it is an enactment of sincere irony. It is, there's a whole back appendix in the work where he goes, where he talks about uh, the cultural studies paradigm. 
And um, it's doing, it's attempting to do something very similar to what the uh, original thread of metamodernism was doing, which is theorizing post postmodernism um, in a way that returns certain kind of modernist assumptions and frameworks to things and sort of aspirational uh, pragmatic idealism. Uh, so, I mean, for me, like, it is both an enactment of a metamodern sensibility, as well as trying to theorize meta modernity, met, you know, metamodernism in terms of a post postmodern uh, uh, situation. Um, and but it does that through a developmental lens that draws on the integral heritage. So I just, for me, I don't see it as. I think it would be too simplistic or too much of a caricature to just say that you know this was just a convenient label that he slapped a version of integral, you know, into, and then, you know, kind of, and now two things to add to that. One is actually, so, you know, apparently Daniel Gortz is friends with um, Seth Abramson, who's been a figure in the metamodern community mm -hmm. who isn't really anymore, but he was kind of very active in, in, in an earlier phase of that. Um, and, um, and another thing is that I know that um, I was just talking to actually Daniel a couple of days ago and um uh, and and there's a sense that if this would have been done today, it probably wouldn't have been as over the top and have said, you know, oh, I'm shanghaiing this term. And, you know, he calls Vermeulen and Von Doniger cowards because they're not fully, you know, and it's a very over the top and extreme, you know, and I think that that has alienated people in the cultural studies camp who aren't, you know, they don't they don't like it. Uh, and it's not uh, the sensibility that that works in an academic context, which, you know, also to its credit is, I think, part of the enactment of the metamodern modern sensibility outside the postmodern academy. So anyway, that's just a response to some of that, because I hear that argument get, you know, kind of, fr and there is some truth to it. I'm not, I'm not going to say there isn't, you know, it's not that he, the Hansi Fry network comes around, picks up metamodernism and basically continues it whole cloth. There's a lot of new stuff added in. I just find it, um, it's a it's its own narrative, I think, to try to say that it's just a, an empty vessel that got sort of uh, you know uh, pirated, uh, you know, in, in some radical way. So I don't know if you have any reflections on that. I do, yeah, and I, I get your point on that. The way I look at it is, I think it's you know I think it's fairly clear that a lot of what he proposes in that book was things is is a constellation of things that he developed independently of, you know, uh, Vermeulen and Van den Acker. Um, he already was developing those things. And then he he retroactively drew some, drew some lines back. I agree that it's kind of blurry in that we're basically looking at something that's culturally emerging that's a movement towards a post-postmodern sensibility. And I think it doesn't fall into neat boundaried camps there's this emerging cultural thing hmm. happening. And so I think a lot of people, you know, um, looking in from the integral side, seeing metamodernism emerge from, from the perspective that I was familiar with was, look at this, there is something happening that we've been kind of speculatively talking about culturally emerging. It's now emerging independently of reading Wilbur books, mm -hmm. but it's something that we've been feeling coming as a, a broader sensibility. I think, you know, if you, to give, you know, credit to people like, like Denver or Linda, um, they want to be very clear that some of the, the programmatic aspects of what integral is or what Hansi's metamodern is, you know, where there's some normative and prescriptive elements and some aspirational and future, um, that their project is very different. It's descriptive and it's, you know, um, so th they mm. want a clear disciplinary um, separation there. Um, but from my side, watching what was emerging with, you know, uh, with metamodernism, it really felt like here are people intuiting things that the integral community has also been intuiting, talking about similar kinds of processes being described. So in one way, you could say with that blurring of boundaries, if Hanzi is really metamodern, then so is Ken Wilber, mm. right? Um, so is integral. Right, because I, I think a lot of that that movement has been seen, described, and is afoot. Um, that's that's kind of yeah. my take. Yeah, and I mean this. There's an interesting angle to that where conceptually, I think that that's certainly the case. Like, um, you know, at his best, you know, the the theorizing of 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 Wilbur 
about post postmodernism and about you know its performative contradiction and all that stuff and you know he's obviously in dialogue with Habermas and other thinkers at the time as well who are you know responding to postmodernism but a lot of that I think is very what we would call meta modern now it's a it's an engagement with both you know the 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 dignities of modernity and, and modernism and postmodernism post modernity and a kind of toggling relationship synthesis whatever you want to call it oscillation to get to some other thing on the other side of that that incorporates elements of both so in that sense i think that i'd be very comfortable saying that um you know wilbur's work uh especially the theoretical aspect has a deeply it's a it's like you know proto meta modern philosophy or something like that um the only thing then that becomes interesting about it is that i do think and and this ties into i think where we're going to go in a second that the sensibility isn't quite the same uh, as as you see in meta modern aesthetics, right? That like there is maybe a bit more uh, a bit more earnestness and not enough irony to match what we would tend to think of as a meta modern sensibility. Um, and then again, there's this relationship of uh, let's say this association because people can contest this, but this association of integral with new age, the new age movement, which also itself has a kind of generational uh, aspect to it of of sort of you know Wilbur himself is addressing you know the boomers and boomeritis and all that stuff, and so this meta modern thing is also more. I think associated with the sensibility of of millennials and into you know uh, Gen Z, et cetera. So there are some meaningful differences there as well. And the last thing I'll say about that is, you know, <laughs> I could I could understand why uh, if if I were coming out of the integral community and then someone started saying that I was meta modern, that it would it would actually kind of be annoying because it'd be like, wait a second. The integral community, you know, largely inspires a set of these ideas that then get taken up into the meta modern paradigm, and then that meta modern paradigm retroactively labels me according to its term. I can mm -hmm. see why people would be bothered by that. So that's why I don't tend to say that as much. But maybe I'm overthinking about uh, it um, because I just, yeah, uh, you know, to to say that Wilbur is meta modern, you could also say, well, maybe meta modernism is integral, and you know, yes. and I, yeah. So there's so, but I, so clearly there's a lot of blurry, and as you say, I appreciate that. There's a lot of blurry edges here, and there's multiple angles in which all this stuff is interacting, both in terms of people coming out of the integral community and then re retroactively relating integral ideas to the metamodern container, but also just independently, basically, the integral community intuiting, anticipating, and naming some dynamics that just naturally show up in the metamodern era. Those are both sort of similar but different aspects in which these things kind of show up, wind up showing up in the same paradigm. Um, and then all the other things. So anyway, um, so- I would I add one thing there yeah, yeah, real quick. Yeah. yeah, just, yeah, not to take off too much. Just, I agree about a difference in sensibility. And I think that that's just not- something you can predict. And it's actually not something that's theoretically grounded. You know, it's not growing out of theory so much. Theory is kind of retroactively accounting for something that's happening. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so there are going to be different emergent sensibilities. Uh, Mark Allen Kaplan and Michael Schwartz have both, for instance, for a long time been tracking the emergence of what they consider an integral sensibility in art, in painting, in film, and in other contexts. Mm. And there's not a clear connection between mm. artworks that are being labeled metamodern and artworks that are being labeled integral. Mm. So to me, it's a broad territory that's pushing into, you know, where there's some homeomorphic equivalencies. There are some mm. other kinds of things where there are echoes of each other. They're not necessarily the same thing, but they're also, in a sense, I also, just like you, I'm I'm hesitant to do that clear black and white splitting off, um, especially, you know, since uh, a lot of what characterizes Hansi's work as Hansi's work and his unique contribution is material that, um, you know, Vermeulen and Vandenacker or Linda Siriello or Greg Denver, none of them really resonate with that mm. as what they're talking about. Um, you know, I think you have a unique perspective that you, I, I think you have a synthetic and an integrative kind of way of thinking about things and you are able to see maybe, um, connections but uh in my my encounters that I've been having you know especially since all this little kerfuffle happened I've talked to a number of people and mm -hmm. 
there's the sense that, you know, um, there's some disconnect in terms of internally within the, you know, the metamodern community about where the continuity is and is not. Um, I think we're going to be getting into that. Um, and yeah, you know, I, I think there's something valuable in, in what you're trying to do and, 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 and enact a space that can synthesize, you know, um, and bring and bring together into common cause, you know. I think that's a, you know, uh, not brand naming thing, but that's an integral impulse, uh, an integrative impulse that I respect that, you know, mm. um, we've also been working in, in, in these ways, you know, in multiple sure. contexts. Yeah, no, thank you. And, but it, it, it raises the issue that I think the Hansi works were re responding to as well and pushed them in the direction that those authors went in. Um, and I think there's a similar impetus that came out in, in my book recently, which was also the the thing that you were trying to bring attention to and and generate some discussion around, let's say, is um is and, and this is what I wanted to get to the next, which is uh why the distancing, why the what what is I, I want to move into this kind of trying to wrestle with what you could call both the legacy of integral, but also more importantly, what's the future of integral and I'll frame it this way. Um, you know, uh, people talk about the integral diaspora or diaspora, and it's sort of like people who are deeply influenced by integral. For this, I think, you know, you have to have some sense of the history, which to my understanding, I wasn't part of it. And so you could speak to some of this more yourself if you want, because I think you were more in the mix. But, um, you know, Integral really blows up in kind of the late '90s, early 2000s. The Integral Institute gets set up. It's kind of it's it's a it's it has some real traction in culture. And I think you know like Bill and Hillary Clinton were spotted with Integral books in their arms, and you know Al Gore was reading it. And it was sort of like politicians and leaders and you know teal organizations. All this it was gaining some real traction and being you know part of popular culture. It was also you know, there were a lot of uh, uh, academic engagements with it. And there was the beginning of this sort of, uh, you know, bringing this into the into academic discourse and, and journals and that sort of a thing. And then around 2006, uh, Wilbur's health really deteriorates and the Institute kind of falters a bit. And so some of the uh, organizational stuff gets just disrupted. Things then kind of dissipate and kind of the the there seemed to be like a maybe a cresting of a wave and then you know a sort of dissipation of energy and momentum uh so now we're you know 2009 2010 2011 and then there's this talk of this integral diaspora of people who are kind of coming out of that both responding to it trying to make sense of it of course there were also the scandals with you know multiple figures that were associated with integral and that weren't fully distanced from the movement etc and so then the question is sort of like, you know, what then is the the future of integral theory? Um, and and I want to contextualize so that all that becomes context for me for making sense of the Hansi Freinach works for one thing. Uh, you could also put David Long stuff in here, but people who are trying to carry forward like, you know, the good, valuable stuff that they see in integral theory. Um, but at the same time, recognizing that there's something holding it back now from from getting, I don't know, whatever you want to call it to gaining momentum again under the same term or to you know, being able to properly permeate uh, both popular culture and the institutional frameworks in a real way. And so it seems like people were wrestling with that, had a lot of both theoretical and sort of branding name issues with this term. And we're trying to reformulate some of its best stuff and then kind of give it a new life. And arguably that's what Hansi Freinach partially succeeded in doing with his developmental metamodernism. Um, and so I'll, I'll start there because I have some more thoughts about that. But would you, what, what would you make of that framing and the broader issue that that all this is, is sort of, you know, about? Yeah, yeah. I mean, all good questions and, and points in there. And yeah, we don't really need to go over the whole narrative of what, what happened. Definitely there are some you know, leadership missteps. There was some overshooting and overpromising. Um, there were, you know, just personality issues. Will were probably not really being constitutionally able to be a leader of a movement. Um, and uh, yeah, different different things that that happened that derailed things or that pushed people in different directions. 
there has been continuity, um, you know, of, of, I think, you know, integrative material um, and integral content. Um, even since then, you know, there were the integral theory conferences that were, you know, widely attended. We usually got about 500 people from around the world each time. Um, the last one in the U.S. was in 2015. Um, but a couple years later, the ones in Europe started, and those have been going every year or every other year. And those are also attracting about the same number of people. Um, and now there's, of course, a new North American uh, Integral Theory Conference starting up again. So it is still going on and going forward um, in different ways. You know, I, I've always been somewhat in the diasporic sense. I've, I've always remained engaged with it, but I've also had a bit of critical distance from a number of different elements in it. And that's always been part of my engagement with it all along. Um, I think there were efforts made to, uh, you know, to, to carry it into academia. And, you know, it depends on the context. Uh, you know, it, sometimes it has worked well and not. But as I mentioned in our conversation with Tim last week, you know, there are, you know, uh, probably 45 uh, colleges and universities, including big name ones that have integral courses, integral content, integral, you know, presentations, people doing, if, if you expand it to the number of people doing dissertations with integral theory, it's even a bigger number. And including there's like three or four, maybe even five universities that are actually centered on integral principles. So in some of the back and forth on the Metamodern Spirituality Forum, when there were comments about, you know, integral is uh, poison or anathema for the academy, it is, it depends on the context and where you are, you're definitely going to get pushed back. And there are definitely excesses in integral thought, which is just not going to fly in certain academic contexts. And yet it's not a black and white thing. And it's sure. actually gained a lot of traction in a lot of different places. Um, and if you look at the academic journals and, you know, there are, I think that I know of about 55 books that are applying integral in different contexts from economics and education and healthcare and all of those things, all of those are, are you know carrying forward these ideas not in a way that has all the excesses of I am behind the cosmos and they're doing it in very practical grounded ways um, and you know uh, so again it, it, to me it you know at the last integral conference I went to which was in Sedona that was a a pretty hot meeting I, I think you talked to Nomali about it but that was a pretty hot meeting she had which is has the integral ship sailed. And, hmm. you know, it, it it really might have, you know, we'll have to see what happens with these conferences. Um, I think Tim in our conversation kind of very roundabout and very politely kind of asked about it in terms of, you know, movements have their time and maybe dissipate and something else comes along. And is it okay just to let something go and let the new emerge, right? And definitely those well, things happen. Yeah. So yeah. well, that's that's kind of my question is, I mean, are you can you say that you're sympathetic to the desire to carry forward the best of the integral, uh, you know, inheritance, let's say, uh, of 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 really powerful sense making meta theory and uh, uh, cultural um, developmental lenses that can really, um, you know, shine light on, you know, historical evolution in, in, in meaningful ways and tie in some, you know, complexity frameworks and, and, you know, is there, are you sympathetic for folks who, uh, find so much value there, but also see it as maybe incomplete, a bit excessive, and maybe a bit dated and wanting to incorporate its ideas, but also being held back a little bit by, you know, not necessarily being able to put themselves fully in that paradigm for all sorts of reasons, um, and for a million different reasons, uh, I guess. But do, do you see what I mean? Like, because uh, I feel like there's a kind of um, it, it, a lot of this does seem to be online breaking down into kind of tribalistic camps and people are villainizing other people and, and not you, I don't think you're doing that, but, but that is part of the discourse at the moment and sort of like, it's sort of, it's very either or. And I feel like, 
if you could maybe speak to some of the some of the challenges and the tensions there, because I also see both sides of this. But to me, I feel like, um, you know, people maybe aren't giving grace to the fact that there's there's a lot of good that can come from these new shifting uh, changes to all this. I, I, I don't know. Do you see what I mean, though? I, I do. And yeah, I think a uh, couple thoughts on it. One, you know, again, just for anyone who's listening, who catches our conversation with Tim before I, I talked about, you know, appreciating a field with thousands of flowers blooming and, you know, that we need multiple movements. There, there doesn't need to be, you know, integral ownership of anything or whatever, you know, I, that's not where I'm coming from. Um, and I think there are natural differentiations. Um, I, I can definitely understand. And this is, I think, part of layman's take too, is that there's something, even just looking at the name, there's something around the name where it's, it seems to be too tied to a particular set of things that there's not a lot of freedom to move. It's it's locked into one individual and the metamodern doesn't have that um, problem. It's a newer thing. There's a little bit more freedom to move there. You know, I think people like Greg Denver will kind of <laughs> not be quite happy yeah, with that, right. with that right. use of that. Um, yeah. You know, I can understand his, his take on that. Uh, one of the things is, you know, uh, Yes, there, you know, there, I, I think there can be a, a pushing away that's fruitful and that's, you know, uh, and, and needed, um, you know, to give you some new space. I would say my response to the part about it being dated um, is basically, to me, that's the people who are reading Wilbur's books, but not reading all of the stuff that's been going on mm -hmm. in terms of uh, all of the scholastic academic and extra academic engagement with the materials um, over a couple decades. Uh, yeah. And there's a lot of stuff that, you know, I think people could appreciate um, if they, you know, if they, they were tracking those things, just for example, you know, I, I haven't read Storm's work yet and I actually want to, it, it mm -hmm. sounds very good to me, mm -hmm. um, but going through, all of the philosophical innovations that you describe in his text are all things, every single one of them are all things that integral literature has been engaging with mm. and very similar arguments mm -hmm. being made, not by Wilbur necessarily, but mm. by a lot of people working in this space. Yeah. So there's a, you know, there's a, and I don't think, and I think I've said that to you, but I don't think he's taking anything from that. I think it's just, yeah, yeah. it's it's emergent in this time. Right. Uh, people are tracking what's coming. I, I see, you know, Vermeulen and Vandenack are talking about how speculative realism and object-oriented ontology are metamodern. Mm. This is stuff that, you know, integral thinkers, um, especially in the diaspora, but, you know, integral post-metaphysical, all that, mm -hmm. we've been tracking and working with and engaging and digesting. Yeah. Um all of that stuff as part of what we consider to be basically integral post-metaphysical. Um, yeah. So, it, you know, to me, yeah. that, that that sense of it being outdated or, or gone is like, it's just because it's not tracking what's actually been well, happening. In yeah. The community. No, I, I agree with that. And I'm also sympathetic to that because I know that this, there's like, there's a, you know, this is part of the challenge, right? Is like for, what do we even mean by these terms a word like integral does it just mean the work of ken wilbur does it mean the whole community and the academic work that's you know integral review and all the you know um i mean michael commons and other developmental thinkers were you know publishing articles and papers in 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 integral review and um anyway so uh, this is this is all part of the challenge i feel like is that um i think the biggest thing is that the integral term and the brand, so to speak, it, it it all feels to me very tied up with Ken Wilbur, which isn't even necessarily a bad thing. Cause I mean, Ken Wilbur for, I mean, you know, an incredible thinker and he did so much. And, and, uh, you know, the, I always try to emphasize this too, because I don't want to come across as being just critical. I mean, I, I've gained an incredible amount from Wilbur's work and from integral theory and uh, it's been transformative. Um, but it's interesting because I feel like Wilbur himself gets to a certain point and then maybe around, I don't know, 2000 something, the community continues to carry that forward. But when you talk about integral to people 
for most of the context, it's going to come back to Ken Wilber's work and what's in his books, basically, right? Mm -hmm. And so even though you get fascinating debates and updates and 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 alternative models and this sort of a thing showing up in the broader community in academic context, uh, none of that exists. And I, I mentioned this as well, I think, and, and maybe it was in the con conversation with Tim, which I'll link. Um, none of that exists anywhere that you can like point to and say, you know what I mean? It's this sort of scattered, diffuse collection of various kinds of addenda to Wilbur's model. And so... Um, and that's not to discount it. I mean, it's it's been a crucial bridge, but that for me, it seems like, you know, Wilbur does this thing and then there's the, you know, the wave crests a little bit, there's this diaspora. And then on the other end, Hansi pop, pops up and is one iteration of trying to carry some of those critiques and that, that, that stuff forward in a way that you can turn to and read in a text and be like, okay, this is a new, if not seminal work, it's at least something that we can, you know, work with in a paradigm that sort of, crystallizes and encapsulates a bunch of the um, uh, responses to and revisions of Wilbur's potential weaknesses in a way that can be kind of carried forward. So that to me is a, is a big challenge around all this is, is trying to, you know, grapple with Wilbur's role and how much integral is Wilbur, ooh, sorry, um, and how much is, um, how much is part of this broader sort of academic literature Um I don't know. I mean, do you have any thoughts on on any of that? Yeah, yeah. You know, I I think it would be good. You know, and I've actually been con contemplating whether it would be in the form of a class or a book. But it would be nice to have a book that kind of summarizes a lot of the diasporic thinking, but uh, you know, and and the integral and integral adjacent thinking. Uh, there are you know fifty five books out there that you can go look to that are applying integral in different ways. And a number of those are, um, you know, kind of summative things in terms of like uh, uh, dancing with Sophia um, or, you know, the different collections of essays on, you know, the Anthropocene, uh, basically the whole thing that uh, Sean um, and Nick were trying to do in terms of bringing together, you know, anthologies of people um, mm -hmm. thinking about and extending integral thought, bringing it into dialogue with other uh, integrative meta theories, such as, you know, Bhaskar's critical realism and mm -hmm. Moran's complex thought. Uh, so, you know, those books are out there um, and, and they are, they will give you, I think, a good sense of where integral thinking has gone, um, you know, in its own flowering, in its own development. Uh, you know, I, I definitely get the thing around being tied up to, you know, a name. If you reference it, it's all, always going to point back first to him because he is such a massive influence and, and a lot of the other people are not yet. I think one of the things that, you know, um, you know, in, in my engagement, yeah, I, I definitely am a deep appreciator of your book and I did not want to come across as like a main critic. I'm, I'm not feeling that in my in my my soul <laughs> right um Thank you. my my point is you know i think you know you could you could uh acknowledge a you know a connection to integral thought and influence and in a in a more non anti-fragile way mm. rather than just not having it there mm -hmm. because anyone who digs is going to find it mm -hmm. Um, if anyone who digs into Hansi's work, they're going to start seeing him talk about spiral dynamics and integral. Sure. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I don't think it's necessarily death to an academic text. You know, Greg just published his main academic presentation mm -hmm. of his model, and he cites Wilbur 55 times sure. in his book. And his has more academic risk factor to it. It's being officially published, not self-published. And, yeah. you know, um, so I think those things can be done without um, sure. without necessarily messy entanglements. You yeah. know, they just have to be handled in a way that preserves your container while acknowledging those relationships, you yeah. know? And, and, and thanks for bringing that up. So a couple things quick, and this also all ties in, I mean, all this is really related, but it ties into the, the more theoretical stuff I want to get into in a second. But on that point real quick, I just, to make the case for what I was trying to do with the book, because I've said this in the forum, but, you know, for the record, as it were, for the YouTube record, 
Um, so my book is is Metamodernism or the Cultural Logic of Cultural Logic, and it's an attempt to synthesize uh, the kind of major strands of metamodern discourse. That there were multiple books, there were multiple people talking about metamodernism. They'd all um, they were coming from different places and drawing on different lineages, and they were but yet they were saying very similar things. And so I was trying to make a synthetic argument for uh, what's the there there? What is this deeper structure that kind of underlies all this? And a large part of that not just because it was coming from not just the desire to put something out into the world that could work as a helpful primer or introduction to this field, which there hadn't been yet. But more than that, um, some groups in the metamodern conversation were not acknowledging that these other metamodern conversations were like legitimate or that they actually were real metamodernism, quote unquote, or something, right? And so the cultural studies camp, I mean, this is mainly coming from, yeah, Greg and and, and Linda primarily. Um, it, it, at least that was one set of voices being like, oh, that Hansi Freinach stuff, that's totally different. It's just, uh, it's just using the term, but it's talking about something totally different. And for all the reasons we've been discussing, I, I'm like, well, you know, no, there's some profound overlap here. And what is that overlap? Um, so I felt like that needed to be, you know, uh, presented in some meaningful way. Ultimately, didn't have any impact whatsoever on on Greg or Linda's thinking on the matter. So whatever. But um, so that was one angle. Uh, the other angle was uh, one of the other meta modern discourses. Lena Rachel Anderson was trying very adamantly to to say how clearly her work had nothing to do with integral theory. Um, and again, you can back up and then ask why. And part of that is because she was getting a lot of academic pushback from people who were saying, oh, you know, blah, 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 blah. If you're using this term, is it related to this? And that was causing her problems. So we do have to take seriously that in some instances, as you acknowledged, in some context, uh, you know, Wilbur's work and, and integral theory doesn't play well or the academics don't play well, well with it or something like that. And so there were certain kind of uh, needs for that. And anyway, so on the one hand, I'm hearing it from Lena Rachel Anderson that, oh, no, there's no Wilbur here. And, you know, Greg Denver and the cultural studies camp, oh, no, there's no Wilbur here. And meanwhile, you know, the Hansi Freinach book itself is trying to itself distance itself from Wilbur. Uh, right. And then so I'm getting all these different things going on there. And then what do you do with that? Um, and, and then, of course, there's Storm's work, which has zero connection to to Wilbur's work. So in trying to make a, a synthesizing presentation of the different strands of metamodernism, uh, it seems it seemed odd to me that one of the initial critiques of the book would be, you know, th these are all Ken Wilbur's ideas. And where is he in the book? Right. Uh, but I, I for all the reasons, too, I'm also sympathetic to that because of the Hansi Freinach lineage and because and here's another point, when you try to get a kind of vision logic on this whole thing, um, yeah, you're going to get accounts that are uh, comparable to w Wilbur's sorts of thinking about things because he was right about a lot of this stuff. And some of that is already in Hansi's uh, interpretation and his theory as well, which I think theoretically is in many ways a bit richer and more robust than some of the cultural studies theory. Um, so anyway, that's just sort of a partially in a, an apology uh, in the in the in the Greek sense, you know, an apologia, yeah. a kind of defense for uh, why that is the case. But also I've appreciated the feedback because I did wind up adding, you know, a footnote so that 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 Wilbur is included so that when people look to that. The last thing I'll say is, um, you know. For me, I'm synthesizing metamodernisms. Now, if Wilbur was an influence on one strand of metamodernism in particular, like that's great, but that doesn't necessarily mean then that I need to include that in the synthesis, right? It, there might be a big influence on Storm's work of some particular author or on the Vermeulen and Von Doniker people. They might have some major influences, but you know, there wasn't a, an outcry of where are those secondary influences in this work? Because it's like, well, I'm not synthesizing the secondary influences of these strands. I'm, inf I'm synthesizing these metamodernist strands. Anyway, again, I'm just trying to explain to people um, for, you know, what some people see as the gla uh, the glaring downplaying or, or absence, at least originally, of, of Wilbur from this text, which for me and others who read it or initially kind of were surprised by in terms of understanding what the project was. And, and so anyway, uh, that's that's all just to, to put that out there and to try to explain to people. In fact, um, yeah, I'll leave it there. Um, unless you have any any additional thoughts on on that um, point, um, yeah, no, I, I, I get where you're coming from, and I know that there was a lot of pressure from, especially people like Linne and others, um, about wanting that distance. Um, 
I think in terms of public relations, you know, if you looked at that survey of what people did on your forum about where they came from, more than half of your supporters in your project are coming from Integral and Spiral mm -hmm. Dynamics. So, of course, there are people saying, where is that, you know, mm -hmm. mainly because, you know, at least in the telling of the Hanzi story, it was not growing primarily out of existing metamodernism and it was right. not growing out of um, you know, he he directly acknowledges the spiral dynamics and the Wilbur mm -hmm. as primary sources, not secondary sources. Well, I mean, uh, yes, yeah. they were primary for him, but then for me to to do a meta modern survey, then they're secondary. That's what I mean by secondary. Okay, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we don't we we put our positions out there. I don't need to you know hang on that. So well, I just wasn't sure. I mean, I, I feel. I don't know if there's anything you feel has been clarified about that, or if we're just, we basically understand each other and we're just in slightly different positions, which is also fine. But I wasn't sure if, if at this point, any of that rings a little bit more, um, you know, makes more sense. I don't know. Oh, it does. You know, I, I, I could understand the thinking behind it and the pressures that you're having and, and what you're wanting to, to do. I, I feel like, you know, my 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 perspective on it is some acknowledgement could be put there without trying to say these are integral ideas, mm. um, or that you know, that that would not be debilitating to your project. Sure, um, that would be more anti fragile because it would at least, as Hansi did and others, that there was a you know there was an influence there that was actually, yeah, um, formative for some distinctive elements that are part of the overall metamodern synthesis is. That part of the metamodern synthesis involves some integral ideas that are playing well within that context. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And I guess just the last thing I'll say about that is it is this bind of um, well, I guess we've already we've we've been around that that carousel a number of times. But where I want to move next, I guess, is is into actually some of the the theory side of this. Um, and uh, so, okay, you know, some of the reaction right is uh, is either. Oh, this meta modern stuff. Well, wait. Uh, you know, this is all Ken Wilber, or this is all integral theory, right? Which is a kind of funny reaction. So then, when I hear that, I'm I'm like, okay, well, wait a second. For all the reasons I talk about in the book, there's multiple lineages here, the majority of which don't have anything to do with Ken Wilber, but um, but one of them certainly does. But then, even in that tradition, that Hansi Freinacht lineage, let's say, um, there are very meaningful differences between his model and integral theory. And so I've also noticed that in trying to make this clear to people um, that uh, that they don't like that either, <laughs> meaning, you know, just saying that this is what Hansi Freinach's, you know, developmental metamodernism is. And then there's a sort of uh, a kind of uproar. Uh, and so it's either it's all Ken, Ken Wilber or, oh, this is just, you know, some some terrible mutilation of Ken Wilber or something. So what, but what I want to get into not, you know, so much about the reception is just the theory, like the, the validity of the theory, which is um, a big difference between metamodernism from the Hansi stuff and uh, integral theory from Wilbur is that um, there is a, a kind of uh, critique of the, what he calls stage stacking, you know, like it's not, um, He's using the model of hierarchical complexity um, and feeling comfortable using that up to its highest levels, you know, that we have empirical basis for. And that uh, that particular model seems to be very well grounded. It, it, and, and even the upper stages of that are still speculative and there's not a whole lot of good stuff to go on there. Right. So basically there's this, um, you know intentionally kind of incendiary claim in in the Hansi work death to turquoise which is this kind of which when you actually read then everything under that text is actually a rather nuanced position and all this stuff right but what the critique is is that everything that you know shows up in these the the high stages and the indigo and the and the clear light consciousness and all that stuff is just sort of like we're not going to go there we're not going to go there for many reasons um and so it tries to it tries to stay more within the container of, of developmental theory in a neo-Piagetian context that would, I think, in most 
conversations with neo Piagetian, you know, developmental thinkers to the degree that there are any, you know, substantial numbers of them out there would be like, yeah, okay, that, that works. Whereas if you throw in, you know, Ken Wilber's developmental synthetic model, they'd be, whoa, wait a second. Right. And now we're already starting to see data coming out in which you actually try to map, you know, MHC level to, you know, these other softer stage models and those don't map up. And so there's, there's empirical theoretical issues with, the the Wilbur model that it seems like the the Hanzi model is trying to take seriously and build into its 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 model and this is part of a broader I think critique of there's more speculative stuff you say excesses and I think that that might be a good term for it but like there's more stuff in the Wilbur model that includes you know, everything up into these high levels of consciousness. And then you've got, you know, transcendental waking up uh, enlightenment modes. Uh, and you've got, you know, um, yeah, this, this very, it's a, it's a meta theory of everything. And it includes enlightenment and, and, and a deep spiritual focus and meditation and all that. And that's just not, that's not what the meta modernism of Hansi Freinacht is focused on. It's much more kind of contained. Um <sighs> So all of this to me speaks to some real differences and I guess I'll just, that's, that's the framing. Do you have any response to how people are responding to that, those differences? Do you think those are legitimate critiques or uh, alterations to make to the model? Do you think that those are, that this, this just hobbles metamodernism as, an, as a whole theoretical framework? Uh, you know, what are your thoughts on those, those aspects of the differences between them? Sure. Uh, I, I don't see Hansi's innovations as distortions or destructions of integral. I think he's got good ideas and respect, you know, uh, a lot of what he's doing. Um, you know, I, I think sometimes getting Wilbur himself to accept any kind of innovations <laughs> is difficult. I've encountered that myself, mm. um, you know, but overall, uh, you know, I don't have any kind of that kind of criticism that you might have encountered somewhere, right? Um, I, I'm sure you've encountered it. But yeah, for overall, I don't have that kind of criticism. I also, uh, I mean, there are, you know, a number of people, Otto Lasky and, uh, you know, Tom Murray and, you know, other people within the general integral uh, community. Uh, of course, there's Suzanne Cook-Groyder, and you're talking about where some of there's like a disjunction at the higher levels. Mm. Um, uh, I think, you know, Terry O'Fallon is doing some interesting work that has, you know, very, very high level of inner rate of reliability, even beyond, you know, most other established, uh, you know, models so far. So, you know, there's a, there's a, a diversity of approaches to developmental um, thinking within the integral community. I think Wilbur tries to give this big picture overview because of his background in transpersonal, that he wants to make room for all of the highest, uh, you know, states and, and possibilities and stages of spiritual traditions. And as a theology, as an overall spiritual orientation, I think that's that works. As a social science or as a as a psychology, it doesn't work. Hmm. Um, and I think, you know, within the integral community, those perspectives have been wrestled with for a while at the conferences and mm -hmm. things like that, that, you know, people do recognize the need to be, you know, careful and empirical and, you know, all of that. And so the 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 little bit of, of retraction that is on the part of Hanzi in terms of like, let's really talk about what we can clearly articulate. I think there's a lot of sympathy for that. Mm. Um, I would say, I think, you know, Hansi maybe pushes off a little bit harder mm -hmm. against Wu, um, than, than some integral thinkers would. And in, in terms of, uh, at, at least in terms of, you know, what is possibly emergent for, for turquoise in terms of styles and thinking and, and modes of meaning making, it's definitely way too early to talk about turquoise or higher as any kind of emergent social viva medic viva medic kind of thing it's mm -hmm. there there are no structures to support that you know and i think that critique is valid and well recognized within the integral community among you know again the people who are 
many people contributing to the journals and to the attending the conferences and things like that. Hmm. Well, that's very interesting to hear. I'm, 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 <clears throat> excuse me. I guess I'm heartened by that. I, I, you're framing that as a theology, that's very compelling, but as a social science, it doesn't work. I guess, I mean, I would say it exactly the same way. Um, and I think that that's part of the struggle is that like, there's so much there for a potential social, uh, social science to be, you know, to be benefited, to be uh, expanded by these developmental models. But then when you try to use Wilbur's integral theory and bring that in, it brings in this theological component, at least by association, that then people feel like, oh, and it already kind of preemptively sort of confirms their worst suspicions about all the the things that might get brought in through the back door or the front door uh, if we kind of move past some kind of a postmodern relativism that, you know, we're going to be bringing in all this theology and stuff and, and, and these, you know, whatever. And um, so I think that that's a real struggle. And then in the context of trying to do, give credit where credit's due, but also, you know, not bring in, you know, the whole, you know, it's like, you don't want to throw out the baby with the bathwater and all this stuff. And I, I just, you know, I, I, I think people watching this can see me like, like physically wrestling with like all the, all this stuff here, because um, I'm very sympathetic to all the kinds of issues that are within the integral community around trying to um, carry it forward into the future and then bumping up into metamodernism doing adjacent, but also different things at the same time and the kinds of, uh, challenges that that poses. So anyway, I'm just, I'm just naming all that. But another thing though, that, that maybe one of, one of the last things we'll be able to get to for our, our time today that I do think is important is this woo issue. And there might be a specific angle to this that's showing up just in what I'm encountering because I moderate a metamodern spirituality group. And so, you know, there's an understanding that theology is okay to play in that space, right? And uh, and whatnot. But there is an emphasis, I think, in the Hanzi work around being very critical of gurus, of being, uh, of, of mocking them, of, you know, you know, there's always this quip about, yeah, they'll say all these things and they're going to sleep with your wife behind your back and all this stuff. Um, and a lot of that comes out of deep hurt and pain that's come from, you know, experiences in, in some of these situations. Um, not only that, though, there's also a kind of secular emphasis. I mean, I don't think a lot of people maybe see this as much, but like in the Hanzi work is like metamodernism is more secular than postmodernism, uh, which might surprise people. Right. But a lot of that also is kind of borne out a little bit by the developmental theory. And, and there's nuances to what he means by that. It's not just to say that, we're, you know, that spirituality disappears. And in fact, there's a, there is a meaningful way in which spirituality plays a crucial part of, of Hansi's work. But I guess I'm just saying that um, what I feel particularly relevant and valid about a metamodern spirituality is, is that it can it, it incorporate or integrate modern and postmodern critiques of religion and come out the other side of that with some meaningful, purposeful, robust, spiritual, you know, vision on the other side. And it's been a bit disheartening in the group as I see a lot of things that I would associate with very kind of pre-rational and pre-modern forms of religiosity and spirituality um, come in and then say, it's like, oh, but see, you know, it's trans-rational, right? And I know that this has also been an ongoing problem or at least a, an ongoing point of contention in integral spaces. And um, and so that's another one of these potentially meaningful distinctions for me between, you know, an integral space, conversation space and a metamodern one. But it also seems to be evaporating. Like if I were to um, try to maintain those boundaries, even in the in the group that I set up, I probably, you know, people would would not like it. And so I'm seeing all this stuff come in that I feel like isn't properly doing the metamodern thing in that regard, but it's the floodgates to the integral, you know, conversation have been opened. And so that's where, as you say, a lot of people are coming from and they're bringing a lot of those notions of spirituality with them. And I felt like metamodernism could be an opportunity in which some of that could get parsed out. So again, um, sorry, I'm having a trouble framing these as questions. They're reflections that maybe you can just respond to, but, um, but what, yeah, the woo issue um, and, 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 and how that's playing out. Do you have any thoughts on, on how that relates to integral and how the potential 
uh, difference of approach that metamodernism could take is a meaningful distinction that we could see, or I don't know, any thoughts on that, on that topic? Yeah. One piece, which is from the prior part of what we were talking about with the developmental psychology, but it relates to this also is that, you know, Robert Keegan, for instance, has been in, in productive dialogue with Wilbur multiple times mm. and, uh, you know, uh, others have as well that the needle can be threaded in a way um, where, you know, uh, he's a well-established, you know, uh, developmental psychologist and uh, is able to see even, you know, the higher levels in terms of the, you know, the, the 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 second tier kind of stuff that Wilbur's talking about, he he's able to correlate with stuff that he's seeing and that meaningful exchange and dialogue can happen around that that doesn't necessarily get derailed into woo. You know, I totally understand and can sympathize with people that I'd rather not have to thread the needle, <laughs> right? I'd rather just to be in a context where I don't have to thread the needle than to do that, you know, so I, I get that, but I also feel like from the integral side, there have already been people who are doing that and it can be done. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the woo question, actually, it's, it's, it's interesting. Some of what I have witnessed in the metamodern spirituality group um, about content that seems woo like, or more magic mythic and, that kind of thing, to me, doesn't seem to be coming from integral people. Some of it mm. is. Some of it is coming more from younger <laughs> people who are just exploring this stuff and have, you know, broader liminal community people, mm -hmm. not necessarily people coming from a Wilberian mm -hmm. background who are bringing in, you know, interest in, you know, in in, in magic and astrology and different kinds of things like that, um, that Wilbur... And, and the integral community generally has been, you know, a little cautious around. I, I think Lehman himself has tried to find sophisticated ways to relate to Western esoteric and uh, magical and alchemical traditions, mm -hmm. you know, Jungian, but also post-Jungian kind of mm -hmm. stuff. He's tried to do um, in a way that the integral community has actually stayed away from because that has felt like woo mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Where the kind of the woo factor for integral people may come in more is the the easy um the the easy claiming of identity with or expression of higher mystical mm. states. Mm. Um and but I, I would say in terms of what you are wanting to do with the you know the uh, what what metamodern spirituality could be and and that that where there is this more secular emphasis. To me, that is is largely what we've been doing since like 2010 with mm -hmm. integral post metaphysical spirituality. Mm -hmm. um, that's the interest in that is to really be able to to find ways to work with all the riches of the the religious traditions, um, but that's paying attention to neuroscience, that's paying attention to you know evolutionary science, that's paying attention to psychology. That's that takes empirical studies seriously. That you know engages in you know. Um, something like a Varela's neurophenomenology, where you're really trying to, um, you know, so that's been a an ongoing project that yet we don't want to throw out all of the higher stuff that's, you know, described in religious literature. That's a lot of meaningful experience and content. Um, but you also don't want to uncritically take it on board, you know, in a, in a you know, a, a pre-rational, pre-modern right. way. You know, you've got to wrestle with that. Yeah. Yeah, I and unfortunately I think also what what to me seems like very I don't know sensical intuitive distinctions uh that I presume other people make uh uh that's not necessarily as obvious that like for example I mean people think that when I say I'm against woo that I'm discounting the fact that people can have mystical experiences and that we can have some sense of identity or union with the divine or like I'm totally open I think that's that's crucial I think to spiritual uh conceptions but like for me that's a very different thing than uh, let me manifest, you know, a, a, a new car or, you know, or I'm going to have my healing crystals or I'm going to, you know, speak to the fifth dimensional Octurian aliens for their healing vibrations. Like all that is like, that's the woo stuff. And yet, I don't know. The, it, well, yeah, yeah, to me, I agree with that. And that's 
in my experience, you know, being in the integral spiritual scene for a long time, most of that stuff is also what what integral people would want to distance themselves from. Mm, yeah. Interesting. And just one last thing I'll say about that is, you know, I've been so hardened to find, you know, the folks like John Verveke and 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 the the movement towards trying to formulate ideas around wisdom and meaning and, you know, Greg Enriquez's work and this sort of endo naturalistic framing of, of still spiritual and meaningful uh, notions of, of reality. Um, Bobby Azarian's work, you know, this sort of stuff um, that I feel like I don't know that like that's that's there's something in that that I need to be clear about or name better or try to um, foreground better because there's so much there. And I feel like it's um it's very easy for. But I agree with you, too. It's not necessarily just that people from Integral are coming in and, and spouting woo. I think that there is there's a whole lot more going on to it than that. Um, I know we, we got to go pretty much right now, but any last thoughts about this? I really appreciate you taking the time. I, you're a wonderful interlocutor. You're a friend. I appreciate you, you know, coming, you've come to the meta modern retreats in the past and done some great presentations. Um, and you know, we're, I, I consider us intellectual partners and, um, you know, I would say fellow travelers, but I feel like that has this nefarious connotation with like, I don't know, is it <laughs> communism or fascism, but we're, we're going on the same path, you know what I mean? And, yeah. uh, and we have a lot of shared goals. Um, and yeah, so anyway, I just wanted to say all that as well. Um, but w any final concluding thoughts around integral meta modernism, the community, the discussion, the kerfuffles, any of it. One thing I wanted to say about the, the secular piece, um, just that's an emphasis that we've been looking at in the integral post-metaphysical sense, and that's coming from Raimon Panikar. Uh, but he talks about sacred secularity and that there's a a collapsing of the of the two world mythology. Mm. And there's an infusion of the secular with the sense of the sacred now. Mm. And it's not worshiping this. It's But it's actually finding meaning in time, finding mm. meaning in becoming, finding meaning in the overall flowering of universal form and existence, right? Yeah. Um, it's not needing to retreat to a transcendental um, space. And, you know, I think that's been an impulse that, again, if you look at you know, what, uh, not only what Wilbur has articulated, but if you really start to follow the thread through Habermas and a lot of other people about what's involved in like a post-metaphysical approach, that brings that forward in a, in a powerful way that I think is more resonant with some of the things that you're interested in than mm -hmm. maybe you or others have recognized. Sure. Um, you know, I, I do think that, you know, um, in the, there's a there is there is definitely room for uh, multiple approaches and multiple emphases and all of these kinds of things, uh, and I, I I say yes to all of them. Um, there are going to be some that focus more on kind of meaning. Wilbur talks about translation and transformation, and both of those things are important. Um, there's a lot of work to be done around translating experience into ways that are actually generative of meaning and coherent and build up new containers and all of that. That's one big project. The other is transformation where you're really doing kind of work. And, it, it, you know, it's it's that whole what you're describing as that, you know, recursive reflection. But it's this overall digestion and movement and, and, mm -hmm. and opening up new horizons of possibility um, in terms of your experiential um, you know, grounding, uh, right, and 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 phenomenological experience and 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 self other organization. Um, both of those things are important. Um, I feel like what I encounter in meta modern spirituality right now focuses more on the translation side than mm -hmm. the transformation side. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with that, and in fact. The more you get into the transformation side, the more risks you run for psychological destabilization, flights of fant fantasy, and all that kind of stuff. So it's it's not an easy thing to balance. Mm. Um, I think metamodern in dialogue with integral spirituality, where there's maybe a difference in emphases, um, could be useful and generative for you know mutually mirroring each other in terms of pr preferences and, and that sort of thing. Yeah. Um, the 
Oh, uh, another, I, I just had a little lightning thought, but it, I, I lost it in there. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, yeah, you know, again, you know, I appreciate the project that you're doing, the space that you're holding, your your great generative work and produ producing so many books and, 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 and innovative thinking. You know, I, I, I'm a fan of that. I'm a supporter of that. Um, I'm also consider us friends. I don't consider myself as a primary critic of you or your work. Um, but yeah, um, so I, I appreciate the the chance for this exchange and and, and dialogue too. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, this was great. I'm, I mean, I feel like we got through about maybe two thirds of what I'd, I I wanted to get. Uh, but but this is great. I really appreciated your responses, and I think that uh, that you make a lot of really good points. And I just hope, yeah, I guess that people watch this and also appreciate that, like. Um, you know, these can be meaningful, uh, you know, differences, but overlap and similarity and it can be amicable and it can be, you know, um, th that, yeah, I, I, I've, I've been a little disheartened by some of the, the, the meme, uh, element of this, of just going, you know, and, 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 you know, of course that genre itself is just, uh, rife with a loss of nuance and sophistication and breaks things down. And that can be fun too, but there's something, um, I don't know. I, I feel like some of the camaraderie gets missed and, and, and we wind up kind of breaking into these tribal uh, groups, which ironically was the very opposite of my intention in writing the book, uh, which was to try to bring everyone more on the same page. Um, and I, I don't think that that's necessarily happened, but I do think it's been clarifying in some interesting ways. But anyway, I've really appreciated your responses and um, yeah, really appreciate you as a person and the work that you're doing as well. Um, and uh, gosh, oh, and the last thing I guess I wanted to say is um, for context too, I'm I'm still under the weather and coming back a little bit from a sickness. So I'll try to blame some of my incoherence <laughs> in this uh, conversation on some of that. Um, I appreciate you kind of fielding my amorphous reflections and responding to them uh, as though they were questions uh, throughout this conversation. Well, we wanted more of a dialogue anyway, so that's totally fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, that's true. That's true. Um, but anyway, all right. Well, I'm sure there'll be more conversations to come, but, uh, but Bruce much appreciated my friend. Thank you so much. You too. All right. Take care.